Reharmonization is when we change the chords that are set to a melody, we redo the harmony. This could be a really subtle change like swapping one chord or it could be changing the entire chord progression. It can be really fun and interesting to take a well-known melody and set it to new chords, so today we're going to take the classic Eleanor Rigby and take it through seven progressively more complex reharmonizations. Let's start on level zero with the original chord progression of Eleanor Rigby. Eleanor Rigby is in the key of E minor, and the original harmony features a nice mix of tonalities, including E Dorian that we get from the raised 6th here, the C sharp in the E minor 6 chord, and we get some E natural minor, E Aeolian, from the lowered 6th, C natural. So for our first level of reharmonization, let's lean completely into that E Dorian sound. We'll do this by choosing chords exclusively from the E Dorian scale. So how exactly did I choose these chords? Well, the main thing to consider when choosing chords to match to a melody is how the main melody note of the bar interacts with that chord. In this bar, for example, the main melody note is A. So the most foolproof way to choose a chord for this bar is to use a chord that contains that note A. For example, A. I've used the same logic here. The main note in the bar is E, so let's have an E minor chord. For this bar, I've taken a different approach. The melody here starts on an E note, so I could have played it safe and used another E minor chord to match the melody, or at least used some sort of chord that contains an E, like a C major chord. However, I wanted the chord progression here to have a sense of movement, a sense of cadence, so I chose the B minor chord because it's the fifth chord of our key. The B minor chord doesn't necessarily sound in harmony with the melody here, but if anything, that's actually kind of a good thing because the tension created here between the melody and the B minor chord makes for an all the more satisfying resolution when we then return to the tonic chord of E minor here. So let's go to level two now, and for this I want to take us to an alternative minor scale. Level one was in the minor scale of E Dorian, so now let's switch to a different minor scale, E harmonic minor. To achieve this sound, we need to get the most distinctive scale tones of the harmonic minor scale into our chord progression. These are the lowered sixth C natural, which I've included here in the A minor chord, and most importantly, the raised seventh note, D sharp, which is here in the B major chord. For level three, we're going to begin to venture beyond the song's original key of E minor. We're going to go into an E blues sound instead. The blues sound comes from the combination of the minor and the major. So here we have the original Eleanor Rigby melody, which is in E minor, but we're going to now set it to some E major chords, creating that bluesy sound. I've also added some dominant sevenths, which will really hit home that blues sound. <laughs> For level four, we're going to use modal interchange. This is where our tonality draws from a variety of different parallel modes. So I've included this F major chord here, which is from E Phrygian, but we've also got this D major chord, which is from E Aeolian. On top of this, I've also chosen to end the progression with what's called a Picardy third, which is when we resolve a passage in the minor key with the major tonic chord. So rather than resolving to E minor, we resolve here to E major giving it quite a grand and complete sound. E 
even though the harmony is now getting quite far removed from the original, it still works because the melody is still supported by the chords below. For example, the A in the melody here works perfectly with the F chord because the F major triad features an A. And likewise, the E here in the melody works with the C major chord because a C major triad features the note E. So, although we've gone on quite an adventure so far with our chords, we still haven't ventured beyond the song's original key centre of E. So for level 5, we're going to change the key of the song, and we're going to do that without changing a single note of the melody. All we have to do is use the chord progression to change the context in which we hear that melody. Let's change the key to G major, more precisely G mixolydian. This is sort of the easiest key recontextualization we could do, because G major is the relative major key of Eleanor Rigby's original key, E minor. E minor and G major share all the same notes, which makes it much easier to find chords in the new key that will work with the original melody. The most important element of this reharmonization that has reset the key centre to G rather than E minor is that at the end of each phrase we really hammer home that G major chord. It also helps that the original melody resolves to a G note, which ties in perfectly with our new key. For level 6, let's get serious. We're going to change the key centre again, but this time we're not going to go with the easy option of the relative major, we're going to recontextualize this E minor melody to sound like we're in the key of A major. As always, I've achieved this by making sure to choose chords that support the melody above. But of course this does start to become more difficult once you change the key, because now many of the melody notes don't naturally appear in our new key of A major. Also, just like on the previous level, I've really hit home that new key center of A major by playing it twice at the end of each phrase. Right, so here we are at the boss, level 7, and this time we are once again going to recontextualize the melody into a new key, this time D major. But on top of that, we're also going to throw in a load of modal interchange, blending different versions of D. We've got some D Aeolian, D major, and D Phrygian. And to top it off, we've given the progression a very rich, jazzy quality by adding plenty of upper chord extensions like 9s and 11s. <laughs> Now, with this reharmonization, we really are starting to push it with how well these chords are going to support the melody. For this first bar, the note A fits well with our B flat major 7 chord, but then there is this brief B natural in the melody which clashes with the B flat in our chord. However, we can get away with this because it's such a fleeting moment, it winds up sounding like a little bluesy ornament. And likewise, the E in the melody here doesn't really fit with the G minor 9 chord I've chosen. But I've sort of intentionally lent into this. The E melody note combined with the G minor 9 chord creates an element of tension, tension that is then released in the next chord, our tonic chord of D. <laughs> One of the trickiest elements of reharmonizing this melody into the key of D major is getting it to sound resolved at the end. The melody of Eleanor Rigby resolves to a G note here, but the note G is going to struggle to sound resolved in the key of D major. That's why I've used this D sus4 chord here resolving to a D major chord. The sus4 to D major is like a distraction from the fact that the G doesn't actually resolve. The G in the melody fits in with that sus4 chord because the G literally is the sus4, and then the sus4 chord resolves to a D major triad, giving us that sense of resolution and completeness that the melody wasn't able to provide. So there you go, it really goes to show the power of harmony to change our perception of the key centre and the mood of the song. 
So next time you're covering a song, or even arranging one of your own songs, consider that the chords of a song are never set in stone. Just because the original artist played it a certain way doesn't mean you have to play it that way too. Even a subtle change in harmony can have a deep impact on the feel and power of a song. And a big thank you as always goes to everybody who supports me on Patreon, including an extra special thanks going to these wonderful people. Thank you.